Warriors. Kevin Durant, well, he had 50 points, but Golden State still lost to the Blazers last night. Now, it seems KD and company still haven't gotten over all the criticism they received when Steve Kerr let the players do the coaching earlier this week. KD says this, quote, everybody just loves to hate on the Warriors. Whatever we do, they don't want to just say they hate us. So they're going to make up excuses as to why they don't like us or why it was disrespectful. Who gives a blank? <laughs> All right, Chris Carter, does Durant have a point here? Is this everybody just sipping on that haterade like Doug's over here doing? No, everyone doesn't hate the Warriors. But let me tell you something, Kevin Durant. When you decide to go to Golden State, you have a lot of people start hating you and not hating the Warriors, but there's a dislike because it felt as if it was unfair, like the competition was unbalanced. For those who want to be competitive, um, my good friend Stephen A. said he thought it was a chump move by Durant going there. Me, I, I would call myself a purist. I love the way they play basketball. I think that this is a collection of players that we will talk about for a long, long time. I think that we're in a window that's very, very special. No different than the window when Julius Irving was in the NBA. No different than when Michael Jordan took over the NBA. Mm -hmm. These are all different phases. The phase we're in now is the phase where the Warriors dominated in a phase where LeBron James was in his prime. Yeah. So I think that they are very, very special. I'm glad I'm not with the rest of the national media. but. This old underdog thing and, oh, uh, everyone's against us thing, like, enough of that. All right, Golden State, like, enough with what you're talking about. We had Philadelphia, yeah, they should have been the underdogs. They had a backup quarterback. But all these teams saying they don't get respect and they're the underdogs, no. Like, let, 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 let's uh, you pump your brakes a little, KD. It, it does feel a little bit like, you remember how LeBron struggled with wearing the black cap? early in his run with the Miami Heat. Yeah, right? being the villain. He didn't like being the villain. Yes. Yeah. I think Durant's struggling with this a little bit. Now, look, one of the reasons I think that well, he... Well, Kevin, give us a little bit of the makeup of Kevin Durant before he went to Golden State. Like, who he is as a person, off the court, on the court, like his personality. Well, remember, he was in Oklahoma City, and he was just, he was a guy who everybody loved. Just as happy yeah. as could be. Happy like as can be. He, he was, he was always, he was always seen as a gym rat. Like the coolest guy in town, he owned a bar in Oklahoma City. Yeah. He bought two townhouses and combined the two. Like he was just, he was all about Oklahoma City. Everybody loved him. Like Russ was, everybody respects Russ, but Russ wasn't somebody that guys were drawn to. Everybody was drawn to Kevin Durant. His mom would sit courtside, his brother would sit Great courtside. Great story. Yeah, right, yeah, right from, from nothing to something, his MVP speech. Yep. You know, giving his, MVP. To, to his mom, you're the real MVP, right? Yeah. All those things. He was beloved. And now all of a sudden, people start to take shots at you, and you're not used to it. You're like, hey, and then. Then, like, hey, I just won a championship. Hey, I just outplayed LeBron James. And you're still trying to cast negativity on us. So I think he's struggling, much like LeBron his first year. Mm -hmm. He's struggling a little bit more delayed in his second year with the idea that people aren't, that they're not giving him the credit that he believes that he might be due. I think the whole reason, the whole impetus behind the move from Oklahoma City to Golden State was when they matched up with the Warriors in that, when they were up three games to one, every time he got the basketball, he had two guys on him. Andre Robertson or whoever else was on the floor for the Oklahoma City Thunder, they're playing a zone yes. and guarding him man-to-man. -man. Yeah, tilted yeah. His, his side of the court. Right. So to him, he was like, look, I think I'm the best offensive player in the game, but I can't show it. Yeah. So if I go to a place to which there's just plenty of space and you mm -hmm. can't help off a of staff or Clay or, mm -hmm. or to a lesser extent Draymond Green, I, I can make you pay. I think that's what it was about. And I think that when he finally won a championship and proved beyond a reasonable doubt that if you don't think he's as good as LeBron James, that's fine. Nick obviously doesn't. Um, I think he, right now he's surpassed him, at least offensively, and starting to get there defensively as well. But I, I respect what he showed the world on the world's biggest stage for mm -hmm. basketball players. I don't think he feels that fans or that media members or maybe even some guys in the NBA feel the same. And I think that's what this battle's about. And I think that he's... He's uh, he's personalizing it. And yes. I think he's bitter about it. Mm -hmm. So I really like KD. I think he's like a fun, jovial kid almost. Me too. I mean, he's got a great energy, right? But here's here's where I think he's mistaken. I think his expectation, to your point, Doug, that the world is going to cheer you on and celebrate you making a decision that is in your best interest is misplaced of Kevin Durant. Mm -hmm. I think he's being naive to think it. I think I'm with you. I'm a purist as well. I think that you have to take your talents and cultivate them in the way that is in your professional and personal best interest. That yes. is what he did with the move mm -hmm. going to Golden State. He was right to do it. But 
Is it in the best interest of Oklahoma City? Is that in the best interest of all the people that became, uh, you know, a part of the fabric they thought? No, no. So, yes, they're upset. Yes, they demonize you. Yes, mm -hmm. they feel like you betrayed, uh, you know, a commitment to, to their community. But that's not Katie's problem. But to expect them to celebrate and cheer on from the sidelines, him deciding what's in his best interest, that he's going to end up sorely disappointed. Yeah, he needs to get over it. And there's a, there's a, there's a sports maturity that comes with being in professional sports. It's, you have to become a little more callous. Mm -hmm. Let's look at Steph Curry. I mean, he was the most adorable little cute thing going on. Sure. And then they lost. And then maybe his wife started getting a little backlash. People start talking about his product as far as Under Armour. Sure. But you don't hear Steph complaining, because Steph, he's not a villain, but he's kind of gotten used to being famous. Sure. KD could take a take a page out of Steph's book. Good point. You don't hear Steph complaining about the game, but Steph, man, that adorable thing. I mean, that that you don't see them showing the highlights of Steph before the game like they used to, with him doing all the dribbling, mm -hmm. all the shooting drills, and everything. No, Steph has kind of gotten used to who he is in the overall global scheme of basketball. And KD needs to give a, give himself some credit, Bruh, You are arguably the first or second best player in the world you're on the world champ like it's not you against the world and all of us don't hate you you actually have some of us that are still admiring the great skill that you have yeah it's, it's interesting because you go back to the twitter thing right where he's where he's trolling guys on twitter on <laughs> burner twitter accounts right this, these are all symptoms yeah. the, the technical fouls are a symptom the the comment about people hating him are a symptom and the problem is as kind of, I think we've all identified, he's struggling with being the villain, not being beloved. Mm -hmm. not, you know, it's like, I, I'm sure he's probably sitting there going, if I had stayed in Oklahoma City and not won a title, people would actually like me more yeah. than they like me now. Yeah, right? it would have made everybody else happy. Yeah, right, it would have made everybody else happy. He would have maximized his ability. Right, Where, yeah. whereas I, I see it as a sacrifice of ego. I'm like, look at, you mentioned Steph Curry. Imagine what you, that you won two MVPs, mm -hmm. you've won a title, and you're like, hey man, you come be the better player on my team, because right. it helps us collectively be better. Like, that's a sacrifice of ego that you don't see in any business, let alone in sports. Yeah. But they've done it, and they haven't been celebrated for it. In fact, they've been vilified for it. Absolutely. But Steph handles it better than KD, and KD's gone through. This is a good eight to ten months of these symptoms popping out, and at some point, it's got to be addressed. Right. you got to get over it. And I actually think this was best for his career. Absolutely. This was the best move for his career. No, no question, but this is, a, he's like, it's like the, the rule when you're when you're on a date, don't talk about your ex-girlfriend. Stop talking about your ex-girlfriend, your ex-wife. Sure. He keeps talking about it. They don't like us. There's all Oklahoma. City. Like right. he keep everybody else. Is like, look, dude. Yeah. If you want to start getting over that girl, stop talking about that girl. Also, yeah, but sometimes you yeah. got to talk about her just to laugh, though. Look at you. But also to your <laughs> dating analogy, though, yes. you are a mess. You know what it is, too. Yes. Nobody wants to be the bad guy. Y'all are guys. Y'all seem cool. Men yes. don't want to be the bad guy, right? Mm -hmm. And KD's got to get over that. It's okay yes. to be the bad guy. Mm -hmm. and, and to the Steph Curry comparison, guess what? He comes from Dale Curry, who understands intimately what it is to be that local hometown hero yes. and fall off the pedestal. So he's just fine. KD, mm -hmm. it's a maturity thing, just as you point out. He'll get over it. So you're the dumper. You don't allow yourself to be the dumpy. You, you... Well, it's not allowing okay. as much as just circumstantial dumping. Okay. All right. That's just the way things well, work he, he did buy well, you nice dinner last after night. So Valentine's yeah. Day. Okay. A lot of breakups it's, happen it's, around it's, this time. Oh no, no, no. We're gonna keep it positive. You're, you're good. Here, we're, we're all good. Okay, we're you're all good. good. <laughs> These two mess. Yeah, okay. Coming up, Shakarsa Wicks changes playing style to prevent another injury. To change we'll debate it. <laughs> That's what I heard on the streets. First thing first. First thing. All up in my business. Yeah. You know what I mean? Holla, holla.